All right, it is the world renowned Walter Stebbing. with the man who created that motto, don't you? Yes. And he said, Walter, I never said that. Oh, I love that. He probably never did. No, he didn't. He never did? No. So then do you know who did say that? Uh, I saw somewhere somebody who takes credit for it. But he himself says, no, I never said that. I believe it. Walter. I totally believe it. Wow, so Andy Warhol never said that everyone was going to have 15 minutes of fame. Okay. So, uh, and uh, well, he was my manager for all the yeah. years. Yeah, for how many years? Well, three years. Okay, well, three is good. It's more than 15 minutes. <laughs> three years. Yeah, hello. So, how'd you meet Mr. Warhol? Ah, uh, well, I, was, I am an artist. Yes. No, I'm a. I'm a financial historian. Oh, really? Um, I enjoy being an artist and Thank musician. You. Yes. Oh, and a, and like, what is a financial historian? About debits and bonds. You know all that? Drafts. Really? I'm trying to understand all that. Panic of 1837 and how to bundle triple A rated. Do you do you understand like debits and credits and all that stuff? I guess I do. Really? I took a class and I'm still it just confuses me so much. Uh, well, it's all related to rock and roll. Oh, well, that, that I can relate to. And like, where's the rock? So which is the rock and which is the roll? The debit or the credit? We don't have the a lot debt. of time, but let's say these men came here from. The British East India Company, and they came. To 
and this was going to be their base for uh, their distribution. Well, after the Spain was defeated, then they had all the silver coast of South America. <laughs> and so then they they were the new in this the, the new world order. And this new world was gonna be their base. Like John Smith kind of people. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's, I mean, well, just a few years after. after okay. Uh, this is the new England company of women. Uh, okay. All right. Like and, the tea drinkers. And so then they then they had all these places in South America where they were able to get their silver and they take it to India and buy opium. Okay. And, and then you go to China and sell it to all those people. Okay. Right? And uh, so they, uh, this man had a deaf child. And the woodcock, I know, his name was Bell. Okay. Grim oh, okay. Now, now, nothing was worth it to get you. And Bell says, you know what, I got this invention. He got you. He, I have this invention that, that can help people to hear. And of course, this guy says, well, does it use copper? Okay. Because I know them all the time. And so, Who, Alexander Bell? Uh, now this is the watchword Winthrop's the 1630 Bavarian. The okay. looms that came here. To Did they wear those clothes like they were in Bavaria? Yeah. They were all yeah. Oh, yeah. They were very loomy. The apron and everything. Yeah. All of those symbols mean something. Uh, doesn't when everything. you go past the Mason building, you see two pillars. Do you know the names of those pillars? Uh, Mason Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> so one is Boaz. And this one is Yaakim, and this was, again, these men that came here, they came with that knowledge. Smith and Wesson. Under, under the temple, and, 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 and knowing what that meant, and so you'll always see that. And so they were able to... I see why Andy Warhol liked you. And they were able to do that with all that. And so this man, he says, okay, copper, yeah, good. And uh, Bell, uh, and he says, okay, great. And he has this yeah. thing going <laughs> uh, uh, A radio. So now we've got the electronic transmission. Which is how we do our show today. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then they had the medicine show. You know, old Hank Williams, he'd get out there in the truck, and then they would sell their opiate uh, oh, operations. Really? And, like the first Oxycontin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no problem. It was all legal. Right. Because people were not having as much fun yet. Or they were, but were they sharing it? It, it, it was just, uh, it was medicine. Okay. It didn't have to stick on. Okay. And so, like that's what they had in their little black bags. And so they had the money to do that, and they had this invention of the radio now, okay. and it's broadcasting, and, but it was like, okay, so this man could afford to uh, sell his preparations, but he had to have some entertainment to get people to listen to it. Oh, okay. and Andy Williams did it? Well, Hank Williams. Hank Williams. Yeah. Oh, senior? Yeah, old Hank. Oh, yeah, he's the senior. wonder Hank the third he, is the way he, he is. He wrote the medicine show. Ah. Right? Oh, my song. Wasn't Hank Jr. supposed to play the Super Bowl and he got kicked out? I think so, right? Oh, and then sure. Madonna got right? that's, a, that's the second part of my story. Oh. <laughs> And so the men the medicine show is going on and uh, so they have this thing that the radio and he's broadcasting, you know, a little entertainment here. The problem was the entertainment you had country and western down south and you had this new England kind of new light opera that was popular. These came in started uh, Broadway. And, uh, oh, they started Broadway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the opera was coming from yeah. the world. And yes. English. And so they, so then they had this popular, and, and, and so now after the war, how? Now we have this great thing. How are we going to get everyone to bob to the same beat? Okay. How can we really control people what they have to listen to? So these men from Frankfurt in their great schools of learning after the war, 
Second World War. Like so many uh, ex-Nazis came here with their bombs and things. Well accepted. And uh, he said, I'll tell you what, we got to start something called the Hit Parade. Ah, and that way everybody will bob their heads to the same beat. Because we'll say what songs are hit. Oh, yeah. Ah. And repetition. Yeah, we even it had it down to a formula. Well, well they, they, they're, they're using that formula down. still. It oh, never like changed. No. We, we, I mean, you can turn on songs from the 60s and the yeah. same beat, the same one, four, five. Right. And, uh, so, yeah. and now it's all computerized, so they can just go into the computer and steal the template of whatever song they want to write a hit for. And so, I see so many bands today that want to be popular right. without a clue what right. the hell they want. Where yeah. they're going to end up and what's going on. Yeah. You know, if you've got to be the most popular band, and it's a commercial band, yeah, you know, right. that's what it is. It's yeah. commercial. Right. You might be the voice of the latest hemorrhoid ointment. Like Millie Vanilli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's always the bass line. I'm the nastiest one. Yeah. yeah. The cold virus. Oh, I'm the one. And it's that thing, one, four, five, the same repetition yeah. patterns. Yeah. And so, yeah, what are you really trying to so do? So what would you tell someone today? I, I'd say you're trying to be the biggest hemorrhoid out there <laughs> popular music. So what do you suggest? To just be an artist and do your art and... Be an artist, not a hemorrhoid. Oh, oh yeah. Be an artist. Stop that nonsense. Stop trying to be a pop star. Realize what you're doing. When you see the one tenth of one right. percent, yeah. there's That's something going so on here. How yeah, can you say there? There's nothing right. more contemptible than self censorship. Yeah. Uh -huh. When someone says, "Oh no, we're going to get a record deal," and lately I've seen these pathetic bands that are. Oh, we can't have that drummer, you know, because they don't think right. we're number, and we're not going to get a record. Hello, there are no record deals. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. There are. You would know, and and I, I mean, come on. It's, it, so, is it just a fixed industry? Like, is does anyone slip through the cracks? Well. As an artist, I use every element of the pop culture, whether it's yeah. that progression going from a fourth to a fifth yeah. or whatever. That's no Probably different than if I mix a green and a red together. In a painting. Valid. The same vibrations, the same harmony. Okay. But in painting, I, I can decide what I want to put in there. And... I believe that it's possible to have creativity, not only really creativity, but creativity that really gets to the heart of the matter and expresses what I people agree. are going through today. I agree. So where is your art hanging these days? Well, I have a show at 226 uh, Green Street. I have the uh, show coming up on the 10th at Acne. At nice. The yeah, that's a good address. Yeah. And uh, I'll be in uh, Frankfurt, Jesus, Germany. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm getting my message out there. Wow. So with my artwork, you'll see it. You know, there was Otto Dix, the artist in Beckman. The more that they portrayed these industrialists as like the gross pig, or right. they really did. The more they loved it. Yeah. Mm. That's the painting they wanted. So, wow. I'm fun. That's okay, good. That's my medium. Yeah, painting and music. Painting and music, more importantly, life. Mm -hmm. Every aspect of what makes us who we are. So, like, do you ever have a day where you're, like, down? Like, when you, did you ever feel like, what am I doing? Did you ever, like, feel like, why am I doing all this? Because there's no reason, there's no way to score big? Or did you always just feel this way? I always felt this way. And if you really do the work, uh, I was meeting with the, 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 the Knights Templar. They still have their base and a 30, not just 32nd, but 33rd degree of uh, major generals. This one man who gets to decide what armaments will be passed. What man? Come to company or one. Uh, so I'm very active in 
go in there, I spoke to, you know, I speak right to the, to the man, to the uh, grand prior. I'm on a mission, and I was never not on that mission from the day I was born. And I wake up on that yeah. So today happens to be National Pound Cake Day. Do you eat pound cake? Oh, yeah. Would you please have some pound cake and share a skeleton from your closet, like uh, a story from from your life? Of I guess my skeleton, of course, history goes way. Let's hear it. Well, it was the Star family from New New England. Okay. Ah, uh, and they were directly related to these Wadsworth Winthrops. Interesting. More interesting, there was a man named Backhouse, and he brought the secret of the closet of stone and soul <laughs> on that same. My skeletons go back to there. There was a great highway man who would one day, when Connecticut went from coast to coast, and then Pennsylvania went from coast to coast, right? And uh, one day he'd be on the side of Connecticut, and he'd just cross the border, and he'd, and he'd rob Mrs. Astor. Ah. Yeah, and of course he was hanged for it. Of course. A real my own personal skeletons as well. Yeah. Oh, no, that's what one here. That's a, yeah. a life of skeletons. Of course, we just want one little skeleton. I never wanted to have anyone know who I was because of things that we do in our past. Yeah, exactly. But I'm so proud of living on the Lower East Side. Yeah! And actually living it. Yeah. When the police would park their car here, making sure that the long, giant line would go without any trouble to buy their heroin. Right. Yeah. If you've seen the movie Downtown 81, yeah. and, and uh, those movies, there, there are a few movies, really, that document that period. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, that's, yeah, I'm the Z Matt line. Ah, <laughs> was that on like 6th or 7th Street? Oh, it was the Lower East Side. You could hear them uh, <laughs> selling their wares from, from Bowery. You could hear them selling on 2nd. Yeah, that's back in the day before cell phones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When you would like wake up in the morning and see stray dogs and foaming at the mouth in the lower east side. Exactly. That was good. Do you remember those days? <laughs> Have a piece of paper. Yeah, I, I remember those days a little bit. Those those days were kind of glamorous, don't you think? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I was young those days. Yeah. I was just getting introduced to you with that thing. I went. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> I went with Fab Five Freddy and Debbie Harry up to 104th Street, the TAL, and saw rap music. Ah. I saw these men with turntables and no band taking sections. You know, oh, I don't have a band. What the hell's with that? I was yeah. Just, and mm -hmm. here it was. I, there was a Spoonie G and a Grand Rusty Flash yeah. and a Funky Four. Historic Good Rock Fans. Yeah. I said, this is it. It's done. There's no, the whole uh, band thing, that whole. Pound cake. 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 <laughs> cake. 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 Cake.
What's that you say? There's a quirky, cool new internet show. Featuring rising stars and living legends too. 